tar sands. A couple of weeks later, James Cameron shows up at the tar sands. So I mean, it, it's, it's good to go to the north, and it's good to get all of this, but all of these pipes end up in Angela. Why do I go to the boreal workshops? Why do I speak to the issues of the boreal? If you want to save the boreal forest in Canada, stop the material from being extracted and shipped to my home. You want to stop the tar sand, stop sun and shell from producing it in my home. You want to stop fracking? Nova Chemicals in Corona, one of my neighbors, just revamped their entire plant to process all of the natural gas that comes out of fracking in Pennsylvania and Ontario. You want to stop fracking? Stop from being processed in my home. You want to gut them? Come to my home. Now, the lady I mentioned, Ada Lockridge, her and I started this together 12 years ago. We started this together. Nobody gave us a thought. Our chief and council called us idiots. We were played as idiots in the press. Her and I stood on a roadblock for six and a half weeks. We didn't let industry use my, my road. We own it. It's not a city road. It's not a town road. It's on Genome's road. We didn't let them use it. And we won, sort of. <laughs> what they did is they moved the plant that we were protesting five kilometers down the road. But it was a shell game. Well, we were focused on this plant here. They built a plant inside of Suncor to process bitumen. They didn't tell us about it. All their applications were stamped very quietly. It's a shell game. So when the trailbreaker uh, uh, came out, or sorry, the Northern Gateway came out, I said, it's a, it's a shell game. They want to get line nine. So they applied for line nine and they got uh, 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 turned down. They pushed harder on, on, on the Northern Gateway. They want to get line nine, so they reapply in a way that is unheard of. They want to push the bitumen right through here, all the way down into East Montreal, down into Portland, then up into New Brunswick. That's where they want it. Their own documents. I've got memos from, from them saying that they don't believe that uh, uh, Northern Gateway is going through. Their own documents say that an, an impact, an incident, in, Mid Valley would take three days to get to. So I, I, I want to believe that it's not going to happen. I can't see anybody in a sane mind authorizing the Northern Gateway, but I can absolutely see Harper rubber stamping line nine. In this budget right here, well, let me backtrack just for a second. How much? Do I get a couple of minutes? Okay. Um, in 2010, Harper, the first time in Canadian history, hid environmental policy inside of a budget. It was the first time in Canadian history. And the Supreme Court, as uh, Clayton alluded to, gave us the right to demand consultation if we feel our rights may be impacted. Now, the key words on that ruling was, if I feel my rights may be impacted. So when Harper hid the first bit of environmental legislation in the budget bill, I was the only native in Canada to demand consultation. Because what he did was he granted the minister the authority to decide what level of Canadian assessment would need to be done on major projects and it exempted major infrastructure projects from assessments. Well, for communities in the far north, that notification, that uh, see a notification is the only notification they have that something's going on in their territory. So in a very nefarious way, what Harper did is he removed the ability for the northern communities to know what's going on. You heard Bob Loveless talk about RDOC earlier, or, or sorry, KI earlier on. That was it. What happened in KI was the hunters, the, uh, the hunters stumbled across the exploration site. Had they not been out, they never would have found it. So that's what Harper was trying to do in 2010. He finished the dagger, this budget. What he did in this budget is he had so much legislation hidden in it. I've got 11 top shelf lawyers that represent me. It took those lawyers three weeks to decipher that budget bill because there was everything in it but a budget. Now they've granted cabinet the authority to override an NEB decision. So if NEB rules against uh, uh, Northern Gateway, the cabinet has the authority to rubber stamp. 
inside of this budget, what Harper did was he said that I only have one year to comment on a major project. So if I live in a northern community, and it took me six months to stumble across the exploration going on, I now only have six months to comment. Now I'm a First Nation with zero capacity financially to reach out into the world and bring the experts in to provide the, 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 the diligence of a, of a good consultation. But I don't have that money to do it. So now I have six months to scramble around my band office and see who can do what. So what Harper's done, and he, he's just killed me. He's just stabbed me in the back. And that's what, you know, I don't understand. I don't understand what I'm seeing in the world. I don't understand what I'm seeing inside the political world. I'm standing in front of the 563 chiefs that make up the Assembly of First Nations. I've got Jack Layton on my phone and I've got Elizabeth May on my computer and they're telling me to tell Sean Atlio how to write a, a resolution that will stop Harper from being the next Prime Minister because he was a criminal, he was a convicted criminal and according to Canada, couldn't run in the last election. And I've got these people on the phone and I'm saying, why aren't you doing it? They're not doing it because they want you, John Q. Canadian, to hate me, John Q. Indian. I'm fucking with your electoral system, excuse my language. But that's what it's all about. It's all about turning the tables. We're opposed to industry. We're not opposed to industry. I didn't hear Clay say one word about being opposed to industry. I know his boss really well. I've never heard the boss say a word about being opposed to industry. I'm not opposed to industry. Do it right. That's all we say in Sarnia. Do it right. Before you do something, sit and talk to me. There's examples in Canada that are just amazing examples. The Diné and the Innu have worked with industry to such success through consultation. The caribou are here. Don't go here. This is a traditional site. Don't go here. This is our burial grounds. Don't go here. Industry in, in Labrador got one third more property than what they asked by listening to the Innu by sitting down and consulting with them. They don't consult in there, they don't consult with us, they come with binders that are the size of the Toronto phone book and there's six of them and they say, here, you got 30 days to comment, we're building a new refinery. This is where I live, this is my home. So what does this have to do with extraction? What does this have to do with that CBC guy saying, what are you doing here, Ron? There's no mines in Angelo. Because it all ends with it all stops there. My friend was diagnosed the other day. She's got some growth on her, on her vocal cord. Friday, she sends me a Facebook message. She's freaking out because her and I started this, her and I do this, and we can count family members who are no longer here today in the 12 years that we've been doing this. And now it's hitting one of us. I'm 50. The mortality rate in my community is 55. That means in five years I'm not here. I got a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a 25-year-old. Uh, My reality is I'm going to be there saying I've got a growth here, or here, or here, or somewhere in the next five years. It's just our life. Now, I don't want to say it's all doom and gloom because I've never lost a fight. I've picked my fights very carefully. I got clay on one side of me. I got a team of lawyers that are amazing and they don't charge me a dime to do anything that they do with me on the other side of me. I now have support from Suzuki because he's no longer with his foundation and he says he can say what he wants to say for the first time in his political life. Um, I've got people uh, outside, of, I don't want to put down U of T and, and, and the whole funding thing, but I, I've got uh, profs from York where I speak six times a year who are now part of our legal team um, I taught at Trent. I've got their entire university at my disposal to do what I want to do. So over these years, we've built up a resource of people, good, solid people who just want to help. And I know inside of this room, there's a lot of good, solid people that just want to help, and you say, what can I do? Well, Clay's suggestion to go into Facebook is a good idea, sending them an email and a Skype, do the same to me, do all of that, but write a letter to your editor. They have to do that. They have to read that. Enough people write a letter to the editor, the MP is going to pay attention because you're, you're his constituent. I've been told by my MP I'm not his constituent. I've been told that. Kudos for honesty, buddy. 
He said, you're not the one that shows up at my office in Ottawa. Industry is. And that's the truth. So kudos for your honesty. But you guys are constituents. And in this town, you've got some MPs that do have some balls. So if you happen to live in those writings, write letters to your editor. If you don't know how to write a letter to your editor, I can help pen you one. Clay can help pen you one. Anybody in this room, I'm sure, will help pen you one. We'll deliver it to your door. All you got to do is sign it. We'll even put the stamp on it and get it up for you. Contact your MP. Get involved and come to things just like this. Thank you for your time.